Doctor Who has changed a lot over the years, and that includes the TARDIS. While the core image of a police box that's bigger on the inside has remained a constant, both the exterior and the interior have had countless tweaks. Before we get into the ranking, a quick disclaimer. This video will cover only the biggest or most notable changes to the TARDIS interior, so there may be the odd minor variation or recycled set that doesn't make the cut. If we do miss any that you'd like to mention, please do leave a comment below, and we might throw you a cheeky heart so everyone else can see it too. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with Who Culture here with every time TARDIS interior ranked from worst to best. Number 14, The Thirteenth Doctor's TARDIS, 2018 to 2022. Jodie Whittaker's portrayal of the 13th Doctor was a bit like everybody's favourite mad space aunt, which was a perfect tone for the show's first female Doctor. The only problem was that this mad space aunt also had a new age crystal shop for a TARDIS console room. From the giant Himalayan salt lamp time rotor to the custard cream dispenser, it all felt a bit too try hard. It was also the absolute worst console room to choose for an era of the show that had the biggest TARDIS crew of the modern era. It might have been hard for the writers to find satisfying plots for each of the four members of the TARDIS team during the Whittaker era, but it was even harder to frame them all in a shot on that insanely crowded TARDIS set. From the obstructive central column to the dangling wires and rigid spires, it was often very hard to see what was going on during busy TARDIS scenes. All that being said, it looked really cool when dressed in blue for Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror. Number 13, The Third Doctor's TARDIS, Planet of the Daleks Edition. The Third Doctor's TARDIS console in a shed in Season 7 doesn't really count. However, for an incarnation who was stranded on Earth, the Third Doctor had several variations of the TARDIS interior during his tenure. This version was introduced in The Three Doctors, and lasted throughout John Pertwee's final two seasons after the Doctor had been given back the secrets of time travel, and a shiny new dematerialization circuit. The interior is a solid callback to the iconic original version with a shiny new TARDIS console installed. However, Planets of the Daleks also revealed a bizarre upgrade by way of a cheap white wooden bedroom set. It was a means to let the Third Doctor recuperate after having been shot in the previous serial without constructing a separate TARDIS sickbay set. Unfortunately, the jarring image of a cheap bit of MDF furniture in the Doctor's impossibly futuristic space and time ship was totally jarring. This furniture set was quietly scrapped for the remainder of Pertwee's tenure. Thank God. Number 12, The War Doctor's TARDIS, 2013. John Hurt's TARDIS was the perfect mixture of old and new for the 50th anniversary. It retained the round things from the classic TARDIS interiors, but had the grungy columns and console of the 2005 to 2010 TARDIS. Some may call this design an ugly mishmash of ideas, but this was a doctor who was fighting in the last Great Time War. He likely didn't have time to consider a spot of redecorating. Although the TARDIS is glitching, this is indisputably what the War Doctor's TARDIS interior looked like during the Time War. If the TARDIS is a reflection of each Doctor's persona, in the modern era at least, then this was the ideal interior for the man who rejected the title. It's a TARDIS interior that is stripped back to basics, but retains some of the quirks of the character. The perfect console room for John Hurt's War Doctor, effectively. As it's a one-night-only sort of TARDIS, it's hard to rank it any higher, but there are some interesting ideas here. It also begins the modern series' obsession with the round things that would continue throughout the remainder of the Moffat era and into the Chibnall one as well. Number 11, The Fugitive Doctor's TARDIS 2020. The Fugitive Doctor's TARDIS interior is an exercise in stripped-back simplicity, which makes sense, really. Given the cannon-shattering reveals in Fugitive of the Jadoon, a distracting and wild new TARDIS interior would only have made things more complicated. It's a beautiful-looking TARDIS console, though, harking back to the ancient Gallifreyan design. With the Fugitive Doctor being decidedly no-nonsense, it's also stripped of any quirks like a custard cream dispenser. It's a clean, simple TARDIS design for the covert division operative about town. This simple but recognized recognisable TARDIS interior also aids the tension of the scenes between Joe Martin and Jodie Whittaker in Fugitive of the Jadoon. It's so recognisably a TARDIS that it further cements the impossible knowledge that the Doctor and the audience are being presented with. A spot-on interior then, but the police box exterior of the Fugitive Doctor's TARDIS is a whole different matter that will keep the fandom arguing for decades. At least they can all agree that it's good she kept the round things. Number 10, The Third Doctor's TARDIS, The Time Monster Edition. 
The washing up bowl TARDIS gets a hard time, but it's exactly what you'd expect from a 1970s update of the original 1960s design. It's not for nothing that it was this interior that the LEGO Dimensions designer chose for the third Doctor's TARDIS in the game. It only lasted for the Doctor and the Master's game of TARDIS Chicken in the Time Vortex at the end of the Time Monster, but it's an underrated gem. It has a sense of scale to it that other TARDIS console rooms don't always achieve, while the fact that the roundels double up as scanners is a neat touch. The Master's TARDIS looked exactly the same on the inside, which is perhaps why they dispense with this design in the very next serial. This set was retained for the three Doctors in the next season, but they stripped out the bowls to more overtly call back to the 1963 original. While this was an obvious choice for the show's 10th anniversary, it was disappointing that the more Space Age spheres built into the walls were excised, never to be seen again. Number 9. The RTD Era TARDIS 2005-2010 from very early on in Doctor Who's history, the TARDIS was a place of safety. That's why The Edge of Destruction was the perfect third serial for the first season, because just as Ian and Barbara were becoming comfortable with the Doctor and Susan, the TARDIS became a place of danger. Since then, returning to the brightness of the TARDIS with its comforting white walls became shorthand for safety. However, you don't get that with the RTD era TARDIS, which is an almost oppressively dark and dingy place. It's clear that RTD sees the TARDIS as a means to get the Doctor in their companion companions from A to B, and wasn't as interested in developing it beyond the console room as other showrunners were. I mean, it's pretty telling that it was old school Doctor Who fan Mark Gatiss who wrote the Doctor's hilariously convoluted directions to the TARDIS wardrobe in The Unquiet Dead, but oddly, the set is designed in such a way that it's hard to envision the ship beyond the main coral console room. Where are the other passageways leading from that self-contained central platform? Still, this is an undeniably iconic and beloved TARDIS interior. It looked cool in its green and red lighting variants, and had an interesting multi-level structure to the console room, see the Doctor's horrified realisation that Jackie Tyler is still on board in Army of Ghosts. It was also very spacious, with plenty of room for lots of companions. The energetic Tenth Doctor had tons of space to dash around the console, flicking switches like a madman, which he often liked to do. Number 8. The Fourth Doctor's Secondary Console Room 1976-1977 It took producer Philip Hinchcliffe two whole seasons to realise his dreams of a more Jules Verne-style TARDIS. In Doctor Who Season 12, there's barely a TARDIS at all, and in fact the interior was never shown on screen, as the Fourth Doctor, Sarah Jane and Harry used transmats and time rings to get around. And then in Season 14's The Mask of Mandragora, the Fourth Doctor and Sarah Jane go for a wander through the TARDIS corridor. Doors. After finding a boot cupboard that looks more like a grand drawing room, they eventually arrive in the secondary console room. With its mahogany panels, stained glass windows, and wooden console, it was an appropriate TARDIS interior for Hinchcliffe and Robert Holmes' more gothic and literary take on Doctor Who. But unfortunately, it's just a bit less exciting than the main TARDIS interior. The dark wood and lack of an impressive time rotor give it the impression of a stuffy university office, and it's no surprise that when Graham Williams was brought in to make the show less dark, he jettisoned this interior. Number 7. The Eleventh Doctor's First TARDIS 2010-2012 Matt Smith's first TARDIS interior took the concept of a madman with a box and flogged it to within an inch of its life. It's insanely chaotic and wacky. From the old school analogue telly for a scanner to the typewriter encased in the console, all the way up to the gramophone-esque brass encased time rotor, it felt more like a time travelling cocktail bar than a futuristic time ship, which actually sounds really cool now that we put it like that. While the look of old bits of pipe and temperature gauges made everything look a wee bit mishmashed together, this fit nicely with the mad Professor vibe of the Doctor, and of Matt Smith's Doctor specifically. This interior was absolutely enormous too, well and truly pushing that bigger on the inside mandate as far as it could conceivably go with a single room. Unlike the RTD TARDIS, it was also bright, warm and homely, somewhere you'd actually want to hang out between adventures. There were also stairwells and corridors leading to other areas, genuinely giving the impression that there was endless space within. It was the perfect console room for the bow tie and tweed wearing young hips the Doctor, even though it was perhaps a little too chaotic at the same time. Now personally, this one is my favourite, but we have to listen to everyone's opinions here at Who Culture, so I will allow this not to be number one, for a change. 
Number 6. The Fourth Doctor's TARDIS 1977-1982 the Fourth Doctor's main TARDIS lasted right up until Peter Davison's second season as the Doctor, albeit with some subtle changes. The addition of the columns to the walls made this interior feel slightly more grand, although they also ironically squashed the bigger on the inside time machine slightly. The Fourth Doctor, Romana and K9 spent a lot of time in the TARDIS, playing chess, doing crosswords and being stuck in time loops orchestrated by a sentient cactus. There was a real lived-in feel to this TARDIS console room that reflected Tom Baker's comfort in the role of the Doctor. It also opened up slightly to reveal Romana's bedroom and, in the invasion of time, a whole Victorian hospital that was lurking behind one of the doors. Complete with a swimming pool, this was arguably the biggest the TARDIS has ever looked. However, the clear differences between the studio-bound scenes and location footage meant that viewers could really see the join. It meant that ultimately nobody really bought that the Doctor and Leela were really being chased through the expansive TARDIS corridors by Sontarans. Number 5. The Twelfth Doctor's TARDIS 2014-2017 Sure, it's just a refit of Michael Pickwode's design for the 50th anniversary series, however, he updates the Peter Capaldi TARDIS with enough significant changes to merit it having a place of its own on this list. To complement Peter Capaldi's more brooding Doctor, the Twelfth Doctor's TARDIS wasn't quite as bright and inviting as his predecessors. The lights were turned down low and the brilliant blue of the tie rotor was instead replaced with a burning orange light. The addition of the bookcase and the utilisation of the gallery as a library allowed for some truly breathtaking taking TARDIS scenes. Say what you like about In the Forest of the Night, but the bit where the camera spins around the TARDIS is a bravura shot, which is rarely seen in similar Doctor Who scenes. It also gave Peter Capaldi heaps of space to move around the TARDIS, flicking switches, pulling levers, and playing out his childhood fantasy of finally becoming Doctor Who. It's a gorgeous set, and the second best TARDIS interior of the modern era. Number 4. The 20th Anniversary TARDIS 1983-1989 to celebrate Doctor Who's 20th anniversary, the TARDIS interior got a subtle but significant upgrade to see the show through to its cancellation in 1989. The columns from Tom Baker's console room remained, but were reshaped to provide more space. There was also a designated space for the scanner, all the better for Susan and Turlow to helplessly watch the Cybermen place explosives at the base of the TARDIS in The Five Doctors. A brand new console was also installed with that memorable fragmented time rotor which ultimately inspired the central tubes that feature in every new TARDIS from 1996 onward. In what was a sign of things to come, the BBC no longer had the set by the time of Sylvester McCoy's final season. This is why the Seventh Doctor's TARDIS scenes in Battlefield are shot in front of a blanket. Thankfully, Doctor Who would come back bigger than ever in 2005, consigning the blanket fort TARDIS to the niche corners of history. Number 3. The TV Movie TARDIS 1996 the TARDIS interior in the 1996 TV movie is absolutely gorgeous. Although clearly influenced by H.G. Wells' The Time Machine, it also feels like the Jules Verne console room that Philip Hinchcliffe would have had if he'd had the money back in 1976. It's expansive, grand, and it all fits into a tiny British police box. Aside from Paul McGann's reinvention of the Doctor as a romantic hero, the TV movie's stunning console room is its other crowning achievement. Sure, the actual Eye of Harmony shouldn't be there, but Moffat can't of fixed that in Series 7. The warmth of the lamplight contrasted by the chilly blue of the TARDIS in Flight or in Danger is a neat touch. Meanwhile, the grand staircases and gothic cloister room give the Doctor's impossible ship a sense of scale that it struggled to replicate before or since. Although, given how much the TARDIS gets bumped around in the time vortex, all those candles and open flames feel like a bit of a fire hazard. Number 2. The Eleventh Doctor's Second TARDIS 2012-2013 Designed by Michael Pickwode, Matt Smith's second console room was utterly stunning. The clean lines, the bright lights and the silver spaceship aesthetic really helped to sell the inside of the TARDIS as infinitely bigger than the exterior. It was the first time that modern Doctor Who fully embraced the design potential of the Doctor's ship. It's spacious, it's futuristic and it's an absolute stunner quite frankly. It was the best Christmas present that Doctor Who fans could have asked for back in 2012. It also retained the multi-floor design of Matt Smith's original TARDIS allowing for some lovely shots of the Doctor tinkering underneath the console. The mushroom of wires at the base of the console was a beautifully subtle nod to the fact that the TARDIS is a living thing. And has there been anything cooler than those big silver rotating discs at the top of the time rotor that spin when the TARDIS is in flight? It was in this TARDIS that Stephen Moffat attempted to right the wrongs of the invasion of time by revealing other rooms. The TARDIS library was remarkable, even if Journey to the Centre of the TARDIS wasn't. 
Number 1. The 1960s TARDIS, 1963 to 1969. The original and the best, and the TARDIS console that the show keeps harking back to even now. It's not an exaggeration to suggest that the original TARDIS interior was key to the show's success. The Daleks solidified Doctor Who in the minds of viewers, but the moment that Ian and Barbara stumbled into that vast, brilliant white control room was when a TV legend was truly born. Despite a few of the first Doctor's antiques being shifted around or the size of the room being reduced slightly, this look endured throughout the 1960s. In the decades that followed, the classic series made some tweaks to the basic look in order to keep up with the changing technology of TV production. It's fascinating that modern Doctor Who has never fully embraced this iconic look since its 2005 return. From the minute they recreated the 1960s TARDIS for Mark Gatiss's docudrama An Adventure in Space and Time, the classic TARDIS interior was constantly popping back up. From the other TARDIS in Hellbent to the Fugitive Doctor's TARDIS and the 13th Doctor's Dalek Trap, they've all harked back to that brilliant white room. Maybe Shooty Gatwa's era will once again embrace this classic design, a fitting refresh for the show in its 60th anniversary year. Now that's everything for this ranking, but as you might know, we do love a good ranking here at Who Culture, so why don't you check out every Doctor ranked from worst to best. In the meantime, I've been Ellie with Who Culture, and in the words of River Song herself, goodbye sweeties.